They say to understand a person, you have to walk a mile in their shoes. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Ghana is the country where my parents were born. I've been to the capital Accra dozens of times, but this visit will be different. I'm about to spend a week living and working in one of the most polluted environments on the planet, Ghana's notorious waste dump, Agbogbloshi. I've been told about a rubbish dump that isn't just a rubbish dump. It's um, something that's new to me, it's an e-dump. So it's predominantly electronic waste. It's computers, it's TVs, rubbish that has value. Recycling West Africa style. Consumer electronics smashed, sorted, and the valuable metals extracted. This is where technology goes to die. I'm heading towards a site that 80,000 people call home, and where conditions are so brutal that many people die in their 20s. Apparently, it's one of the most toxic places on the planet. They found cadmium 30 times over acceptable levels. Levels of lead topped 100 times. It is a disaster of mammoth proportions. It's been alleged that the rubbish arrives in Ghana from all over the world, including the UK. But are we complicit in creating this place? And what's life like for the people who eke out a living on it? Agbogbloshi lies on the southern edge of Accra. It first sprung up in the late 90s when small amounts of electrical waste started being dumped on a disused floodplain. What's going on? Now, this 20-acre toxic graveyard deals in everything, from kettles to car parts, mobile phones to fridge freezers. It feels like there's just oil everywhere. You can see it in the water and you can just smell it in the air. I've been told to track down a team of young lads who work as burner boys. The people grafting at what is considered to be the bottom of the Agbogbloshi ladder. Hello. What's your name? Mohamed. How are you doing? Are you the chief, yeah? Yes. You're in charge? Yes. You're the boss? Is he in charge? They've agreed to put me up for the week in the slum and show me the ropes on the rubbish dump. If I can't sit. Mohamed. Who are your workers? Yes. What are their names? This Razak. Okay. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. How old? Hello. Yaro. Yaro. <laughs> nice to meet you. So how how did you all come together as a as a as a team, as a workforce? As a team, yes. Muduka Mufto Gari Guda. She muka zo muka tara nanga muna za una wajio guda muna bida. In five years now. Where did you come from? Because you're not from a car, no? And we are north we, we have the northness. From the north? Yes. yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. My family is from, well, I always come to Accra. Yes. But my mother's from Swedro yes. and my father's from Secondi. Yes. So I've never, I've never been here before. Yeah. I've never seen this yeah. part yeah. Yeah. of Accra before. Yeah. So it's a bit of a shock to me. Chief, look before Kanang Bunole. Yeah, I'm look. It's snowing Ghana, it's snowing. We have to stand up Happy birthday to you. Welcome. Happy birthday, Luka. Happy birthday, Luka. Happy So am I officially part of the team now, then? Yeah. I'm in. So in right now, we need to take you to the today oh. so that you can make the fire. Yes. What's this? It's this copper. It's copper. Is this what you're gonna burn? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And the alcohol. Yeah. So I come and yeah, put to work straight away. The burner boys provide a service. Cables that have been stripped out of old electrical goods can be brought to them at the edge of the site to have the plastic burned off. This is copper. So if I burn it, the rubber is all going to move it and leave the copper. And that's where the money is? Yeah, it is. It's not pleasant but it's the quickest, cheapest way of exposing the raw copper underneath. All of these bundles, are they yours? Yes. You have to go collect this one, come. 
Colette. Go Colette, come, make fast. <laughs> Run! <laughs> Daniel, come on, And how much would this be worth a ball this size? How much is this? I can fit charge them like two CD. Then this one. Turn it over. Yeah. So the fire will enter the things mm. and burn it easy. Mm. So the work inside. Thank you. Yes. Inside? Like that? The heat that is coming off of that is insane. And so how, how many hours a day will you do this for? Nine, nine hours. Nine hours you'll do yeah, this yeah, for? Yeah. Wow, the heat. I'm starting to get an idea of just how dangerous what I'm about to do is. Already, like, my mouth tastes funny and I'm spitting and I'm trying to get the taste out of my mouth. I mean, I've been here five minutes. The boys are paid pennies. The odd few notes are a bit of spare copper. It pays just enough to buy food, but rarely more. My boy, come! Yeah. Bring it, be fast! Hang on, you're burning an air conditioning tank. Is there copper inside that? Fucking hell. What is it you're using to burn there? Is that a fridge? Is that a fridge door? The vast plumes of thick black smoke are already making me feel uncomfortable. <laughs> it contains potentially lethal dioxins and high quantities of lead. I've been told that being here for just one week, I'll be fine. But in the long term, it could damage the nervous system, attack the kidneys, and ultimately cause cancer. It's in your nose. Yeah. Oh, you can feel it. How oh, good. Yeah. It's bad. You see? Wow. Yes. Dirty. Blood. With only the copper remaining, the bundles are taken back to the yard where they're bought up by metal traders and ultimately exported as raw materials. The waste site is an assault on the senses, but it's only half the story. How do we cross the river? Over there? Yeah. On the other side of the river, a vast, sprawling slum has developed. Yeah. So the work stays that side, and this is where everybody lives? Yeah. yeah. Officially called Old Fatima, it's often known by a more derogatory nickname, Sodom and Gomorrah. Home to some 80,000 people living within just half a square mile, it has no running water or sewage system, and disease is rife. But for the next week, I'll be staying here with 27-year-old Yaro. We're here? Yeah. Is this your house? Yeah. Is yeah. that a boat on top of this one? Yeah. Is that a boat? Yeah. On top? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I make it because of water. That's one way to make a roof. Yeah. Like most of the burner boys, Yaro came from the impoverished north, part of a massive influx of people lured to the capital in search of work over the past decade. A practicing Muslim, most of his money still gets sent home, but he hasn't been back for four years. It's cozy. Yeah. It's cozy in here. So you're going to leave me to be here on my own? I can leave you to go and stay in another room. Oh, so you're going to be my neighbor? Yeah. Thank you for letting me stay here. I appreciate no, it. Don't worry. This is where you stay with your wife or just? My wife in North, but I get my girlfriend in here. So me and him, we are sleeping here. Do you have sometimes. a girlfriend and a wife? Yes. You know, our, our type of Muslim, we like each other. That's one so way, that's one way of putting it. The house is fine. It's warm, it's nice. <laughs> Cozy. Yeah. And you have children? Yes, I have two children. Wow, congratulations. Right now, it's time for pray. I 
have to make it here because I make late for the for the mosque. Yes. You gonna pray in your room? Yes. Okay. I'm a little shell shocked. It just feels like I've packed a week into a day. <laughs> I'm trying my hardest to take it all in, but it is a lot, so much so that my head's pounding a little bit now. Everything from the conditions to what exists just over there. I mean, you've got a highway over there where you've got a shit ton of people that are just driving past this. I've been one of those people. I've come to Accra a million and one times and I don't know this Ghana. <laughs> I've got no choice but to get to know it over the next week. This is clean, it's dry, it's safe, and it's gonna be home for the next week. And you know what, I ain't bloody complaining because this is a lot nicer than some of the places I've seen today. It looks like he's put the fan together through bits and pieces he's found. I mean, it's so impressive. I, I don't know how he's done it, but I know I ain't gonna try and put my finger anywhere near that to turn it off. I'll probably lose it. Although it's built on a floodplain out of wooden shacks, Old Fatima has its own mini economy. There are mosques, cafes, gyms, and even hotels, but there are no official amenities. Anything that does exist, like toilets or showers, have all been set up as small businesses. I've just made a consistent amount of schoolboy errors. So first of all, I haven't bought a towel. Second of all, um, I haven't bought any soap. So, I don't know if it's the smartest thing in the world to do, but I've nicked a bit of our soap off the side. Tried to clean it as best I can, but there was like an array of pubes on this thing. <laughs> and I think I've just about got it pube free. Okay, should we get to work? Yaro, you're working so hard every day for a purpose. You're feeding your family, you're feeding yourself. Yeah. Do you have a dream? Is there like something you're working towards? In my dream, small time, if I get some of big money, I can I can go and open a, a provision store. You want a business that can look after itself, so you don't need to do this anymore. Yeah. How long before you get your own business? Before you get provision store? But maybe like I have to say like two years or I won't be back in the north. The group I'm with are one of several small gangs working on the site. Boys, I'm not the table at the minute or the time. I'm quite pama. Is that one boy? Each burner boy works with his own suppliers, and how much money he makes is down to him. But competition is fierce. Yeah, I'm not quite pama. Some chum, I'm quite long. But I put my small copper here. You take it. You, you be fucking people. Twenty-one-year-old Awal sends most of his money back home to support his mother and seven-year-old son. He's hoping to get enough together for them to join him and his wife. He really doesn't fuck about, does he? Just gets it done. You, you seem to work harder than them. Ah, yeah. you, you work hard. Look, you're sweating. Look, look at you sweat. In the water, yeah. Bring it. Put it. It's still early doors. It's not even lunchtime yet, and with the amount of copper that's coming through here, this feels like part of a chain, a much bigger chain, and um. If the amount of men coming to these guys is anything to go by, there's a lot of people doing a lot of business further inside Old Fadima. I've been told that the burner boys are doing the hardest and most dangerous work for the smallest reward. But further back up the chain, there are people making money. I've asked a while to introduce me to his main contact, the person who sends all his wires and ultimately provides him with a living. This is my, one of my friend. His name is Baba Tunde. Baba? You see? Yes. Are you Nigerian, Baba? Yeah, I'm Nigerian, yes. Ah, I was going to say, I don't know many Ghanaians called Baba. Yeah. Baba is one of Agbogbloshi's money men. 
the people who bring the 40 electrical items onto the site in the first place. You see, Jesus, Baba, you've got so many computers. Yes. What's the, what's the business like here? Is it going well? Yes, it's OK. So what do you do? Let me show you. That's one way to get into it. So once you quit, crack into it, you remove the boards, right? Yes, yes, yes. So the way I remove the board. Ah. See, this is copper. Mm. You see? Mm -hmm. This is the copper. So when I when when I when I finish this matu, I remove all this one, I sell for him. I've been um, I've been spending some time today with Owa. Yeah. And um he's burning cables to get to copper to sell. Uh, uh, and he's earning a little bit. How can this man? Mm -hmm. How can he go from being a burner to owning a business like yours? But that's their own business. They, they love it. If they doesn't love it, they will, not, they will stop it. Do you love it? They love it. Do you oh. love your job? Yes, you love no, it. No, because of... They love his job. Of, because, of, because, of, because, of, because of financial problem. So how does he graduate to another job? Does he need money? Yes, exactly. Money talks. He can do any other things. If I have money in my pocket, I can move anywhere. Let me see. <laughs> you see how much money is in your pocket. No? Hey, whoa! Whoa! Hey, hang on a second. You've got play. Look at this. I haven't even seen one of these. Uh, yeah. This is it. Computer business. Yeah. This is where you need to be. Wow. You guys, it's always you bloody Nigerians. My God. Bye bye. It's nice to meet you, man. Thank I'm sure I'll see you again. Yeah, thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Okay. Baba specializes in computers and pays a handful of people to break down the goods he's bought into raw materials, like aluminium, silver and zinc. Nothing is left to waste, but it's the copper that's most valuable. Oh, well. Come here. Let me see the size of it. Look at the copper you're pulling out. We are burning <laughs> cable to get copper this much, and you're just pulling out yeah, copper yeah. fresh, this size. Fresh copper, yeah. All these are fresh. You see? You should be working here. <laughs> this is where the money is. So the profit on each machine that you break down will be how much in cities? Five cities. Mm. How many machines will you break down a day? Um, up to 18. 18? Yeah. That's not bad. And if you're getting five, six cities as a machine, it adds up. <laughs> I'm not going to ask to see your wallet. Thank you very much. I did. OK. Yeah. I will. Thank you. Thank you. It's amazing to think that everything here was once just thrown away. In Agbogloshi, one man's waste really is another man's treasure. But for a burner boy, making money is a challenge, and that's if nothing goes wrong. So for all of that that we burn, there's yes. only two cities? Yes. So do you keep much money on you then, when you have cash? Yesterday I put inside my, wa my wallet when it falls down. You dropped it? But somebody take it. How much did you lose? 840,000. So it's like 84 cities. Yes, go off it, boy, go off it. That's a lot of, that's a lot of money. Yes. I'm starting to get more of a clearer picture as to why it's so difficult to have a different job and make better money because, well, I mean, if you're, if you're working here in this environment, chances are you've not got the money to buy goods to sell at any of the other areas out here. And unfortunately, to avoid this, you need money to start. So that kind of explains why there are so many young men here. You know, there's young men who haven't got an education, who have traveled down from the north to find money for their families. And if you've got no money in your pocket, this is the easiest way to earn. And if you're able to save, that's the easiest way to graduate to a slightly better job. Ah, well, he was saving to try and make sure that he's not here forever. And it all went tits up when he lost his bloody wallet, like an idiot. <laughs> How much money did you make today? Today, I get only three cities. Just three? Yes. Instead of being paid money to burn cables, the boys often take a small amount of copper from their customers instead of cash. It's heavy. Yes. It's a good bag. Yes. 
hoping to claw back his losses, Awal is cashing in the stash of copper he's been saving up. Where is this copper for us? Make it ten. No, no, no. Make it ten. Just give the fifty. Done. Uh -huh. That's it. You see? You see? You need me. Thank you, Andy. Let's go. All right. Okay. 50 cities. Yes. 50 cities. Buoyed by his 53 cities, or nine pounds, Awal is taking me to his other business venture, across the water in Old Fatima. Did you paint all of this yourself? Yes. It's a tailor's he's setting up with his wife. So how important is it to you then that you stop working over there, burning for copper? How much do you want to stop doing that? It depends on the scan. We need to scan the oil. We need to Oh, to me, my men are burning me here in Tanzania. Sami. Awal hopes that his business will provide a decent living for him and his family. Right, listen, you take a break. We do some. After what I've seen and heard today, I'm not sure how realistic that is. The Agbogloshi system just seems too stacked against him. But you have to admire his work ethic. And I think if anyone can get out, it'll be him. It's fucking tasty, bro. Mm. Oh, no, I see right. Today was a good day. Hard day, but a good day. My hands even hurting, I can't even look. The skin's peeling off my hands, look. See, ah! <laughs> good night, man. Do you remember being a kid? And, um, I don't know, maybe it's just me. <laughs> but when I was little, I was the kid that would put batteries in my mouth and get told <laughs> and get told off for it. That weird chemical taste. Some of you might know what I'm talking about. That weird chemical taste is what I feel like I was subjected to pretty much for the entire day. I have no idea what the long-term effects of that kind of chemical and smoke inhalation actually are. But I do know they can't be good. I literally just fell in a cesspit. I was knee deep in shit. Literally. Fuck's sakes. So it's a good thing I haven't got any open cuts on my hand, isn't it? How's my luck, eh? How is my flipping luck? Work here leaves you tired, scratched up, burned and bruised. So it's a relief not to be heading back to the site this morning. Today is Eid, the Muslim festival marking the end of Ramadan. Agba Bloshi is predominantly Muslim, and everyone in the slum has taken the day off. That's one way to make an exit, isn't it? <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen an imam leave on the back of a motorbike before. <laughs> it's pretty cool. So long at now. Prayer's finished. Yes. Fasting's over. Yes. <laughs> Everything's finished. So what are, you, what are your plans for Ramadan then? What are you going to do today? We have to find somewhere so that we can go make party. Come on. Wait. Then did I know when you are?
with all the work on the dump having stopped, I'm taking the opportunity to get to know some of the boys better. 22-year-old Razak moved here four years ago, following his elder brother down from the north. He'd hoped to find work as an electrician, but ended up as a burner boy living in the slum with his wife and two-year-old daughter, Barkissu. Are you worried at all about the health of your child being here, raising her in this environment? So if she does go to school, and what what do you want her to be? I uh, next day fine mm. because next day I'll be born nipa. What you say? And I mean, kura time no no, I doctor next no. And the yarbi ach me. Me go back to my look after you. Uh, mm. Hopefully, then you won't have to work mm. burning copper, right? Yes. Let's get. I don't like her here. One bit, you get. Ah, yeah. <laughs> You can't help but feel for these guys. Having to make a choice between bringing up their children on a toxic waste dump or sending them to live hundreds of miles away in the north. It's not a decision I'd ever want to make, but here, it's a hard reality. I've been here. I mean, it is Ramadan, so everyone's out and they're celebrating. And it seems like every corner I turn, there's a new party happening. This is turned into a night on the town with the boys, isn't it? Properly. You know, I realise I've forgotten how old these guys actually are. Their husbands and their, their fathers as well. They've got a lot of responsibilities, but on a night out like tonight, they're a bunch of guys in their early 20s. And when you take into account what they do for a living, I can understand why they want to let their hair down, right? Coming in. Let's go, let's go. After three days, I can see no one here has it easy. Life on Agba Bloshi is tough. As tough as anywhere I've been anyway. Most Muslims will be spending today celebrating with their families. These boys are hundreds of miles from home, but they seem to have found a bond with each other. Living here, it must be nice to think that at least somebody is watching out for you. Despite their close bond, the boys are trying to save enough money to move on from burning. Razak! Awal has been here for four years, but two days ago, he lost his wallet, containing 84 cities, precious funds he was saving towards his new tailoring business. Where are they going? They want to stop them about the money. My money we left, that's all I did, I lost it. Chief, that's yes, I. This morning though, Chief Mohammed has spoken to the gang and they've agreed to chip in and reimburse some of his losses. Half, half is better than nothing, right? Yes. Chief, thank you. So we're going to Bush? Yes. Why am I pulling? Pulling. Armed with 90 cities or 15 pounds, we're headed five miles across the city, hoping to buy some scrap goods at the local electronics market and sell them for a profit back on site. Ghana has a well-established e-waste chain. Electrical items arrive here on ships from all over the world. Anything that is fixable is repaired and sold on. 
anything that can't be fixed, is generally bought up by wholesalers like Baba and taken to Agba Bloshi to be scrapped. Awal is hoping to buy himself a piece of the action. Yeah. Scrapping them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scraps? Scrap? Yeah, scraps. Yinya, you know how much? 76. 70? Yeah, 70. No What's the best you can do for all of it? 50. I'll give you 30. Yeah, but I'm going to go for the I'm going to go for the It's good. Go anyway. Next time, I focus on my new number. Next time. How much? 40 cities. Everything? Yes. Awala's invested 40 of his 90 cities in scrap, but just being here is a gamble. He won't make any money today from burning, and there's no guarantee that he'll be able to sell his goods back on the site. Condemn, condemn, condemn. Condemn, Basu. Condemn, condemn. Basu, yes, I'm a mommy. You know how much? In the way, 27. 25, clean. In the way, you two cities, Basu. We're in the sunny. 250. Not two cities, don't you want two cities? No, I don't know. How much that cost? 25? Yeah. So you still have 25 yeah. left? What's he saying? Seven cities? Mm. Seven cities, yeah, no man. So no man said 21. I got dig, Baba. It's OK, small, one city. There you go. Next Come. time, I arrange okay. more. You go call me, yeah. Right. Thank you. <laughs> you know some other places to go? Yes. Having helped a while get his scrap, I can't help but think, where do these goods really come from? In order to prevent toxic materials being transported abroad, the Basel Convention prohibits the export of faulty electronic goods. But it's common knowledge amongst locals that broken items frequently find their way into the country. Yes, so boss. Yes, ciao. Yes, scraps. Scraps. No scraps. No scraps. No scraps. How are you doing? Yeah, Where do your um? Where do your electronics come from then? UK. They come from the UK? Yeah. All of it? All of it. And have you got any right now? Yeah, I have. Yeah. A surround sound? A surround sound, yeah. Yeah, DVD, OK. DVD. This is from England? This is from England. Where specifically is it coming from? OK, it sounds from uh, Wimbledon. Yeah. Wimbledon? Yeah. OK. <laughs> and then, uh, what's it? Manchester. Manchester. Can you show me? Do you have any? Yeah. Uh... Shall I come in? Yeah? yeah? These are all from the UK? From UK. What part? Uh, That's Sainsbury's. <laughs> That's from Sainsbury's. So, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. So where's this one from? From UK. Uh, do you know where? What shop? What, what business? Uh, because it says on the top, faulty, it's uh, faulty. faulty uh, it's Curry's. Look yeah. at that. Curry's PC World. Okay, there we go. This one's faulty as well. This one's been sent for return. This one is an untested return again. So these are all problematic that they've sent. They're even marked so. So this is an untested return. Do you think these companies are aware of what's happening with their products? Uh, no. There's nothing to suggest these companies ever knew that these goods would end up abroad. And once they sell the items on to a third party in the UK, the disposal becomes the obligation of the new owner. Thank you for talking me through this. I can't believe I've seen this here. Let's go. The UK has strict guidelines that govern the destruction of e-waste. But clearly, some products are still ending up in Ghana. I'm actually a bit embarrassed. The fact that those goods are ending up here, it just doesn't make any sense to me. And the reason that I have such an issue with it is because I've seen what happens to those bits. They end up with Bubba at the computer shop and he smashes them up and then someone like Awal comes and buys the copper. And then he burns it. And then he inhales the fumes and then he goes to the hospital. It's not good enough. Let's go, let's go. I'm going. Back? Farama? Yes. Okay. Go back. Push it. We go walk. We go walk. I'm going to push you. I've got no idea if the goods on our cart are British or not. But with all his money invested, 
we start to head back home. Now let's go and sell it. Yeah? yeah. Let's go. Do you know where to go? Yes. They come for talk. This one's about my one. How much? 40 for? 40. For the laps for the for computers? This. I'd expected a while to break down the goods himself, but there's a sort of invisible order to the waste chain here. Everyone has their job, and I guess it's just simpler for a while to sell the goods on quickly. Please, let's go. Come on, I'm just so good. Well done. Well done. Businessman. We're a businessman. By the time we've sold all the items, it's almost evening. Today has been a gamble, and for our sake, I hope it's one that paid off. Come down. Five, five, ten. One hundred. One hundred. Twenty. One hundred and twenty-three. One hundred and twenty-three cities. <laughs> <laughs> Business man. Well done. I must admit, I'm relieved. Having managed to turn a 33 city profit, a while is now back on track. And hopefully, it's enough to open a tailor shop for his wife in the slum. It's a tough place, man. Awal is doing everything he can to ensure that he's going to be OK. He stands the greatest chance of getting it it being out of this. When there's desperation, people will do whatever it takes to feed their families. This morning, and um, <clears throat> my chest is just ropey as, and I can't really attribute it to anything other than the smoke. All of the boys have spoken about discomfort, but Yaro seems to be suffering more than most. Yaro, yeah. breakfast. This morning, I'm supposed to be going with him to see the doctor, where he's arranged to have one of his regular checkups. Okay, so what is it you need to do? Oh, we have to go so that I need to talk with my boss. Some of my customers, they buy plenty of goods. Correct me if I'm wrong, what you're saying is you want to go and speak to someone yeah. now yeah. to guarantee some burning work yeah. for when we come back from the hospital yes, yes. where they're helping you can wait, wait with the results yeah. of burning. Yeah. yeah. So you want to have work to do as soon as you come back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go, Ekan. <laughs> OK. If you go, I will show you the man. <laughs> so he's having a chat now with a guy who's one of his best customers before we go to the hospital because this guy comes maybe once or twice a year and when he comes to burn cable, he's burning a huge bundle, not just a small one. So, the Yaro, it's important that he secures that customer instead of somebody else getting that business. Bella, we have to go. We go? My match already. You done? Yeah. Sorted? Yeah. Let's go. This way? That is the hospital. Uh -huh. Little is known about the scale of health problems in Agba Bloshi. Few people on the site are actually registered with a doctor. All of the boys I've been working with have been breathing in toxic smoke for years. What is the problem? My chest and my body all is hot. OK. And headache. Uh, how long has it been there? The chest pain and the fever to like four months now. What do you do? In my work. Yes, what work do you do? Uh, I'm burning in copper. So do you, know, do you know you need to cover your nose before you do it so that you don't inhale all those? I know, but in our work there, sometimes it's good for you, sometimes it's not good for you. When you cough, do you bring out any flames? Uh, uh, yes. 
Sometimes the color is black. Are you vomiting these days? Last week, I was spending me, I'm vomiting. Can you take off your top stand, face the window? Any pain as to what I'm doing? No. No pain? No. Any pain here? No. I've seen something. Okay, sit down. Let's sit down, man. Don't, don't put it on this thing. So what we do is we do a blood test. We'll take a chest x-ray. And do you know some of the smoke and uh, things you are touching can bring you sickness? Sickness is still You know. Still I not know protect, about... Not protecting yourself adequately. Do you know any of your colleagues working with you who coughs and uh, blood comes out? Yes, my brother's son. He, he is also, also here. Sure, we bring him over. Let's have a look at him. Okay? I will bring him. Doctor, you were saying that you want some of his friends to come and see you as well. Uh, in your opinion, they should be coming more frequently, yes, these boys yes, that are yes, burning. Yes, anytime they are not feeling well, they should come. It's a problem. And uh, I think the Minister of Health will have to look at this and see how they can be organized in that. Because I believe, especially the, the masks, they need it badly. They will have to wear masks and then put other protective gear. Madam, thank you. Thank you. The doctor's examination has identified potential problems. He's asked him to return the following day for further tests. So the doctor is um, is quite concerned. Something is wrong with Yara, and I don't think that he's quite given it the thought that maybe it deserves. On the one hand. It's easy to know how I feel about the burning. It's wrong. Yaro shouldn't have to breathe in toxic fumes all day just to feed his wife and kids and his mistress. But at the same time, they need this work to put food in their mouths. It's a living, but ultimately, it's killing them. Yaro. Yeah. How be? Well, fine. How be? Mm. You weren't joking about going straight back to work. Have you been here since the hospital? Yeah. You finished? Yes, I finished. How much did you um? How much did you burn? Oh, look at this. Some aluminium. Yeah. So I have to take it to go and sell it. Is the plan to make the money as quickly yeah. as possible? See, that way we we'll go to the hospital. Yeah. They ask me about to cover myself. I can't buy my own hangulus. <laughs> I have been buying hangulus too. Protect myself. And how about your nose? I won't buy the, my nose own. What was it that he said that made you want to buy the gloves? You know, they said that that kind of thing is poison. Right now, we have to change our life so that no, no more poisons in our body, so that we can live long life. What are the effects that we get it from there? Do you not know? You don't Has know. no one told you? Have you not like? Did, have you not asked until it's the first time that you've asked about the effects of the smoke? Yeah, I don't know the effects. Mm. Sometimes you get ulcer, and you get chest problem. The money that you get, take it, cover yourself. You see, see the smoke they enter me. How the smoke they enter me? They enter inside my body. So the matter why I'm talking to you that you have to protect yourself. As much as it's tickling me that Yaro um, has become an expert on smoke inhalation and um, what it might lead to, I'm actually kind of over the moon that he is not only protecting himself, but he's also chewing the ear off of a poor young guy about how he can actually give himself a longer life by just protecting himself while he works here. So if I come back in a year, he might be a doctor for the entire Burner Boys, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I'm relieved that the message is getting through to the boys, but I hate to think what damage has been done from years spent inhaling the toxic fumes. 3-0. Three three Germany 3. Yeah. This is Barcelona and Kipa. Mm. Uh, the stable. Hit the bar. Bah. 
<laughs> you still play football, right? Yeah. How good are you? I'm no way. You play well. Yeah. Did you ever think that you might um, you might play professionally? Did you ever try and train? We've got the academy before. You at the academy? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. When did you stop? Uh, because that time when my father died. Oh. Uh, so do you think you'll ever go back to playing football? Yes. If I, I if I get money, because sorry too, I, I want to travel. If I travel, I can still start continue my football. You still think there's time? You yes. still think there's time to play for Ghana? Yes. National side? Yes. Do you not think what you're doing for a living now might affect your your chances in terms of your fitness? If you buy that med medicine and, and drink it, it will wash every your body. <laughs> it's tragic to hear a wild talk about his health like this. The idea that he can just get rid of all the effects of the smoke with a bit of medicine. But I worry that unless these guys are taught about the dangers of the job, nothing will ever really change. Okay. It's my last day in the camp. I feel like I've started to understand what it's like for the people who spend their lives working on the dump. But I'm keen to speak to someone who can tell me about why the e-waste is still arriving and whose job it is to prevent it coming in. I've been told to speak to Fred, a local politician who speaks out on behalf of the residents of Agbu Bloshi. Why is there such a problem with e-waste specifically? This e-waste issue is from the Western world. Because you don't bring it, then they won't do the work and we have a clear-cut conventions and agreements. Hmm? Mm. Why don't you respect that Basa convention that we are not bringing that kind of waste back to these kind of developing countries? Mm. So the source, the cause of this problem is the Western world. United Kingdom is one of them, mm. at least of America. We are going to give them a gift. We are donating waste. And that is not fair, because you look at the, the poverty aspect of it. What do you think the future for? for old Fatima is? Uh, I think that in as much as we know it's a very bad practice and that is to stop uh, but you have to find a solution to it before. Find a way you can integrate them, find good work for them to survive economically. The thing that keeps coming up is money though, and there will always be money in scrap, yeah. and we will always have scrap. Sure. No matter how far we move forward as a planet, there will always be waste, right? People have to recycle, but recycle in an economic and healthy way. And you think that you are doing good to them. Absolutely, it's unacceptable. Absolutely unacceptable. Listen, it's been a real pleasure meeting you. Fred's passionate about stamping out e-waste in Agbu Bloshi. And it's a relief to hear that at least somebody is fighting on behalf of the locals. But he's right when he says you can't just get rid of it. There's an established community here. People depend on these jobs to survive. Just shutting the place down overnight might do more harm than good. What is this you're burning here? Hmm? Is that from fridge? Yes. You see, it cut more. Yeah, but look at the colour of the smoke. It's not good. Hit this one. Hit down. Hit down. Hey. You need to get masked. Hey, I go buy it. <laughs> hey. Why aren't you wearing it? Put it on. I forget. It's not, it's Please, it. start wearing it. Yes! Look at you, you're the black swan. <laughs> Pass! It's supposed to cover your nose. Of course. Hey, wait, wait, it's hot. No. We need to get you some gloves next. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I don't really subscribe to the idea of favourites. But he's my favourite. <laughs> kind of a cool guy. Range. With my time at Agbog Bloshi drawing to a close, I've built up a strong bond with the Burner Boys, especially Yaro and Awal, 
But as I come to say my goodbyes, Yara's at the hospital for more checks. Um, listen, thank you so much for having me. Thank, thank, thank you for you looking too. after me. Yeah. Thank you too. Thank you for feeding me as well. Yes. And giving me somewhere to stay. I appreciate you. I, I, I appreciate mm. it. All right? Chief Mohammed. Why are you here? Chief Mohammed say get something to give you. You have something for me. What's that? <laughs> hey, you're making me nervous. What make you last uh, last birthday to go back to your hometown? Hey, you go. what's that now? <laughs> Copper. Shit. Ready, better boy. No, 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 Uh-huh. Reggie, the prodigal son. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm leaving. Why, you are going now? I'm going. Oh. Friend, I'm going to uh, go to the hospital. I see the... You the, get the results? Yeah, yeah, I get the results. They say? Yeah, they say I have blood problems. And my lungs, some of smoke. So they need me to go and take some of medications. Mm. Yeah. And how are you going to pay for the medicine? You're going to have to go and burn? Yeah, I'll come try and do some of work so that I can get the money to go and buy it. Yeah. At least today when you work, you're going to cover your nose? Yeah. You're going to wear some gloves? And my gloves. Smoke yeah. is a lot. Yeah. Smoke is a lot. <coughs> Plus, Yo. Yeah. I have to go. OK. Don't worry. Listen, please look after yourself, OK? OK, I hear. Yes? OK. Make sure. I hear. Of your nose, please. Okay. okay. Look after yourself. I'll, I'll, I'll. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, ma'am. Reggie. Yaro, yaro. Okay, bye. <laughs> My week here has been eye-opening. Parts of it I've genuinely loved. Meeting the boys and staying with them in the slum. But I'm all too aware that unlike me, they can't pack up their bags and walk away. The Burner boys came to Accra in search of money and ended up stuck here. They're doing a job that's probably killing them. And the worst part is, we're partially responsible.